So this is um, part two of the um, NCLEX review. We're just talking about live values and how to answer them, the way to think about them to answer questions regarding these kind of problems. Um, you don't have to memorize them, but to be able to apply it. So we have 20 questions we'll go very quickly just to show you, highlight some of the facts you should pay attention to when you see these kind of questions. Um, so the first question is a prioritization question. Um, and this is select or apply. And this is caring for the following clients who need immediate intervention. You have to be sharp. And the way to be sharp is to figure out who has a problem that you need to fix in, in the second. That's what, what it means. There's an acronym for that. You can check my you know, you know, YouTube channel about what each of them means, but you have one second. Who do you want to see among these six patients? Who is the most important patient you should worry about? Who can you see? Who do you think need to be seen fits? You have to be sharp. The way to do this is divide it into two. Find the situation and what is the problem, okay? That's all, and attack each one of them the same way. And rewrite the question your own way. I have chronic renal failure, okay? If I have chronic renal failure, what do you expect from me? There's some lot of values you have to know. These people, the kidney is where you make this hormone, PTH, and that regulates your calcium level. There's no body with the renal failure that has a normal calcium. So this calcium of eight is okay for them. They're on calcium supplement. So that's why they, they take calcium supplement because they cannot maintain their calcium level. So this patient does not need to be seen. History of chronic liver disease. Your liver is chronic. That means it cannot function the way it's supposed to. Think about what the liver do and look at the lab value you expect. Okay, this liver is responsible for making most, most of your albumin. I don't expect them, the albumin to be normal. 2.5 for them, they will live there. That's okay for them. The liver is not working. The albumin is not going to work. It's not going to be normal. That's why they have ascites. That's why we give them albumin. It's bad. It's not normal. But for them, that's where they live. The kidney, the liver cannot make more protein. Severe pancreatitis and a calcium of that. What is the complication of pancreatitis? You see the way you should talk, you, you have to restate the question. You ask yourself, if I have pancreatitis, what should I see? The pancreas chew your calcium, it chew them. We call it saponification. It use it to form soap. Calcium and fat come together to form soap because pancreatitis. Is a burn in your back. You're being burned, so your body won't cool it down. So yeah, the, 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 the pancreas is made up of all fat. So it absorb all this calcium and it leads to hypocalcemia. This is okay. This is what I expect for somebody who has pancreatitis. You're 37 weeks pregnant. With all the increase in your, in your blood volume, you have baseline anemia, that's okay. Don't worry about it. So this patient is okay. You on chronic omeprazole, what is that? That's a PPI, what does it do? It decreases, it's a H2 pump, H plus pump blocker. It block it such that you cannot have uh, acid secretion anymore. Acid, remember when they, normally the pH of the stomach is less than 5.5, .5, right? That means the pH is low. That's why it's an acid, it's an acid situation. If you're not making any more acid, pH supposed to go up. 7.5 is normal. That's what the gastric pH is supposed to be. Use that strategy, attack each question. Don't stress it. Just keep on doing that before you realize you clean all of them. So this is gone. 
this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. Anorexic patient on hyperalimentation and phosphorus of that. Anorexic patient, when they come in, this is Novosa, when they come in, your potassium is low, phosphorus is low, magnesium is low. Okay? When they come in, this is the most important. Low potassium is the most important. That's why we put on cardiac monitor so that they don't go into cardiac arrhythmia and replace their potassium. When you start feeding them, that's hyper alimentation. All of this is going to go down. If phosphorus go down too low, 1.9, this is what we call refinding syndrome. Complication for this, CHF. You're going to die if you don't do anything about it, followed by respiratory failure. So when you start feeding anorexic patient, don't worry about potassium anymore. Worry about phosphorus because they can go into respiratory failure. Your phosphorus con control your respiration, so respiratory failure. So this patient is in trouble. Number one to five are all normal thing you should expect. This is how you do B sharp. If you don't know how to do prioritization, check adapt and close. The easy way to attack all prioritization. It's not that hard. You don't have to make too many, memorize anything. Just like look at each question, situation, what is the problem? See if this use your content, they attack them one by one. You can see that you can, oh, I don't have to worry about it. The normals look fine, abnormal, but what do, is this what you're expecting that patient? Yeah, then just move on. So number one down. So number six is your right answer. Number two, the same thing, test taking strategy, I'll show you how to attack questions, you know. When you do that, it's easy. Which of the following the next shoe, this should say should expect, right? A client with what? Meningitis was admitted to the med cell unit. A lumbar puncture was performed to evaluate for what? Viral meningitis. When I'm doing questions, you see me um, underlying the buzzwords. I keep on underlying the buzzwords multiple times because then I can focus on them to show you guys what you should, the most important things to worry about. So. That's why I do that. So what should I expect in a patient with viral meningitis when I do lumbar puncture? This is a fact you have to know. There's nothing to memorize. When you have meningitis, we need to do lumbar puncture. Why? We take a CSF and analyze it and see if this is a bacterial problem or this is a viral problem or this is a fungal problem. We're looking for stuff. How do we look at it? We look at cells in it, okay? Cells, there shouldn't be red cells in your CSF. It's a clear fluid. If there's a red cells, you're bleeding. There shouldn't be platelets in your red cells. There shouldn't be basophils. Basophil, this is like allergic reaction, mast cells, no. So there should be only two things you should worry about. Is this a bacterial problem or this is a viral problem? Neutrophils attack bacteria and lymphocytes attack viral infection. Every time you have viral infection, your lymphocytes should go up. So basophils, uh, platelets, they are all distracted. You don't need them. So neutrophils, lymphocytes, and glucose, those are the three things you should be looking for when you're looking for CSF. And so you should, when they give you a CF, CSF question, don't even, just look at these three numbers. When the neutrophils are uh, high, you know it's a bacterial infection. The question is a viral infection. I'm only worried about lymphocytes, so uh, lymphocytic problem. Even if you don't, if you can figure out, think about it, when HIV patient, we, we don't talk about the neutrophils, we talk about lymphocytes, how much lymphocytes is being destroyed. 
CD4 counts. It's talking about lymphocytes that is available for them to fight and get infection. So like I keep on saying, you got to break down the question and make it small. And then you can see what the examiner want you to look at. Okay, so two out. Same strategy, right? We do the following lab work. Again, I keep on using lab work. I was in a hurry trying to say some questions. Sorry, I was late. The next you anticipate, select or apply. We've seen this in the morning, but in the different form, I try to reframe it again so that you can, can see. A three-year-old child was brought into the pediatric emergency room after excessive what? Vomiting, projectile, okay? For seven days, the child was diagnosed with what? Pyloric stenosis. On examination, the child was what? Cold, lethargic, tready pauses. We do the following lab value in an issue respect. You can put it together, three-year-old. He's been vomiting for seven days. Pyloric stenosis, you know what? It does not matter. Vomiting, I'm focusing on vomiting. Pyloric stenosis is there to distract you. It's not, is irrelevant. What is the problem? I say in, when, they give you, when you're doing your test and they give you a case study, first two sentences. Why did the kid came to the emergency room? It's vomiting. No, if anybody tell you anything like that, don't listen to them. Look at the chief complaint. I'm a provider. That is what we pay attention to. What is your chief complaint? And then we use that to follow. We make diagnosis based on your chief complaint. It came in for vomiting. I told you about pyloric stenosis. It's a distractor. Look at the chief complaint and look at whether the physical exams fix the problem. Vomiting seven days, you cold, you lactergic, and you have tready pulses. What does this kid have? Dehydration. What do you expect in the lab work? We deal with it already. Okay. You're vomiting from your stomach. Okay. You're losing all your sodium. So your kidney is not going to be happy. You're going to be dehydrated. I told you about GFR. It's inversely proportional to your creatinine. If your GFR is high, your creatinine is low, and that make it normal. You want a high GFR and a low creatinine. creatinine. This kid is dehydrated. A GFR is going to go down because creatinine is going to go up. When you dry, your blood becomes viscous. It gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And you develop polycythemia vera. This is the same thing as polycythemia vera with hematocrit about 55% or 60. This is fine. Your urine become pungent, thick and smelly and concentrated and look like, uh, it's no more like a cool, like really dark. Specific gravity is just definition of concentration. So change this into high concentration. Therefore, this is true. If your kidney, your BUN, you see, I'm trying to explain it to you why each of them is right or wrong. BUN creatinine ratio is two to one. We expect the creatinine to be high. Okay, so let's do some math. I, I like math when I was in school. Two to one, so this ratio is two to one. If creatinine is high, your normal creatinine is one. If, if this is high and I put two here, BUN, when you multiply, BUN should be what, 40. Normal BUN is less than 20. That's why the ratio is 20 to one. Therefore, there's no way you can be low. You have to be high. So this, so one to four is your right answer. If you don't understand something, you can type it, I'll explain it. But that is the way to tackle this kind of question. You have to bring your content, you know, as I always say. And then when you're tackling the questions, it's, it makes things easier. Um, sorry if you're hearing noises here. I'm trying to, you know, 
get used to this system. I usually do Zoom, but I think this is working fine. Okay, so that is the question. Answer is done. Number four, who need immediate intervention? You can't go along without prioritization. I put selector apply, it's a trap. There's maybe only one answer there, okay? There may be only one answer there. And this is caring for the following client who need immediate intervention. You have to be sharp, like I said. And being sharp is paying attention to things that will kill the patient, not an expected finding. Don't focus on it. The numbers can be high, but if it's an expected finding, just move on and don't boil on it. Client with appendicitis. I have an itis. An itis is always associated with infection. Itis, infection. Infection, as you see, WVC high. The normal does not matter. It can be one million. Don't worry about it. A client with bilobed pneumonia. That means this is two lungs. He has pneumonia here. He has also pneumonia here. It's a fancy word to distract you. It's PO2 of 79. What is normal? 80 to 100. One point you want to see this patient. He has pneumonia. You're lucky that he has 79. That is what I want his saturation to be. I don't expect him to sat 100%. We will let him work his uh, in 70s pyramid. 79 to 80, 80, just ignore it. Acute pancreatitis. What does the pancreas? It regulates your amylase and lipase and help in fat digestion. When you break the pancreas, it causes inflammation. It releases its content. That's why it burns. That is what pancreatitis means. You injure the pancreas, you say, okay, you injure me, I'm going to release my enzymes out and the enzymes will chew your body. That's why pancreatitis is, is, is a burning problem. You got to cool it down. That's why you give them fluid. So they release these amylase and lipase to chew all the cells, the tissues that surround it. Your amylase is going to be high, 15,000. The normal does not matter. I can give you 1 million is pancreatitis. Go back to the problem. Pancreatitis, I'm least supposed to be high. Test taking skills. If you've done your job, eliminated eight, one, two, three. If you don't understand number four, you have to pick it. Don't overguess yourself. You got to pick it because unless you don't know what, you, I mean, you're just basically guessing the first three. If we eliminate this, then we got to pick this one because at least we got to pick one answer. I have 11 cramps and my cracknee kinase is that high? Normal is like, I mean, it's very low. It's less than 200. When it's greater than 5,000, we think you have rhabdomyolysis. What is cracknee kinase? This is a protein in your muscle. When you damage your muscle, it get released into the blood and the level go up. Anything greater than 5,000 is a diagnosis of rhabdomyelitis uh, until proven otherwise. This guy is going to go into ren renal failure. If you need to look at a case study, check adapt and class about how to attack this kind of rhabdomyolysis. In, um, you can see it in um, a, any patient who run, take a cocaine or anything like that. We don't fail our patient yet. So pay attention, greater than 5,000. This guy, we got to hydrate them, uh, control uh, the potassium. They have to be monitored in cardiac monitor, a lot of IV fluid, laces. Uh, give them some bicarb to um, take care of the acidity of the kidney, a bunch of stuff. We don't have to go into how to manage this, but this is the, the only, the, if you don't remember anything at all, Hydration is the problem. But greater than 5,000, this guy is in trouble. We got to see him. Number five. What is the priority action? The next priority action. Select or apply, right? You know, this is prioritization. 
And this is caring for a client on warfarin. Okay, coumadin. This is the same as coumadin. Due to prosthetic valve, we got to underline it. The laboratory call with the INR of three. What would you do? Don't look at the answers. I always tell people, don't look at the answers. Make your own answers and see if you match. If I know what I'm looking for and I'm looking at answers, it's easy, right? Right, I, you, you have to look that, right? So, what do you think? What is the next priority action? What is the next priority action? So, you have to come in with some content that you know. When you're on Coumadin, normal people, Coumadin, INR is one, okay? If you take Coumadin, we want to get you to two to three. If you have prosthetic valve, we want to get you to 2.5 to 3.5. He has prosthetic valve, it's three, it's in the middle. What do you want to do with it? It's normal, that's where I want it to be. Do you want to hold the next dose of heparin, redraw the lab work, let them increase their leafy vegetables, and call immediately or monitor them. There's no need to increase it. You draw the lab, it's three, it's normal, nothing wrong with it. When you're coumadin, this is always a trap. Never change how much leafy vegetables you take. It's always a trap, I don't know. Now, if you watch my video, I said the same thing about this. And if you take it, when they give you a coumadin question, it's easy. Uh, people don't explain it that, but when you take coumadin, don't change how much leafy vegetables you take. If you 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 take in five hundred milligram of or five thousand, I want you to keep on taking five thousand. It's a trap. Don't increase it. Don't decrease it. Take the same amount, and don't call the doctor. He will ask you, okay, what do we want you to do? That's normal value. Just continue to monitor the patient. They okay. That's all. So number five is your answer choice. One answer. So don't just pick too much. There's only one in the question. So pay attention to that. This is number six. What lab value the nurse you expect, suspect? It's a select or apply. And nurse is caring for a client on what? Dialysis. I'm underlying keywords. Three times a week. Who present to the nephrology clinic with what? Weakness, fatigue, examination reveal what? Lethargy. It's temperature is this. It's heart rate, 50. This is a full case. Brapish this in saturation of 95. What do you think is causing this problem? Put it together. What do you guys think? Select or apply. You have to use the buzzwords to direct you. Anybody on dialysis, you have to know they have kidney problem, kidney issue. So just try to use your content to limit things, okay? <laughs> You know about them is they have a kidney problem. Then you ask yourself, what is the main function of the kidney? It get rid of things, electrolytes, stuff, okay? The guy is weak, he's fatigued, eh? and he's lethargic with bradycardia. Which of the electrolytes the kidney control causes this problem? You guys try it and let me know what you think. Which of this is causing the problem? Look at each electrolyte. If you know the answer, you can put it there. Look at this electrolyte in the question and see which one is causing this problem. This is a classic case study. So bring it on and look at it and then figure out which one you think is causing the problem. What do you think?
what do you think? So, the best way to tackle it is look, I'm weak, I have fatigue, I have lethargy, bradycardia. Okay, things are what? Going down here. Okay, they're going down here. There's a couple of electrolytes you should worry about. K, calcium, are the most common uh, kidney problem that sometimes your phosphorus, okay, that's what you regulate. So the reason why we do dialysis is because of your potassium. But let's look at each electrolyte problem. Okay, hypokalemia, right? When your potassium is low, right? What kind of signs and symptoms do you have? Is it will decrease your you have what? Constipation. Okay, things start to slow down, but your heart it become excitable when you have low K. Everything goes down, but your heart your heart become excitable. You're not going to be hypokalemic and bradycardia. At the same time, think about it. There's no way somebody on dialysis will have hypokalemia. He has no heart dialysis. There's no way. Okay, he goes to dialysis three times a day and he's bradycardia. Hypokalemia will excite your heart. So it can be that. Hypernitremia. They're usually dehydrated. They may look like that, but they're not going to be what? Bradycardic. They will be what? Tachycardic. It's gone. Hypocalcemia. Signs and symptoms. You got to know this. Okay. This too. When the level is low, you see excitability. Right? Hypocalcemia, everything starts to go up. You have threatening, all those things, signs and symptoms. I never even mentioned any of them. They go into seizures and all those things. There's no way it's going to be hypomagnesium and hypocalcemia. This is the problem. Bradycardia, number one, weakness, fatigue, and lethargy for not being on dialysis for a while is apokalemia is your problem. It's a select or apply, but you have to tackle each one of them. I intentionally answer these questions to make you think you have to think really, really hard. So sorry if you're not getting it back. You have to think really, really hard. The same question, but I change it. What is the next priority action? And this is caring for a client on dialysis three times a week who presented in a nephrology clinic with weakness, fatigue, examination reveal lethargy, and some bradycardia saturation. And on the EKG, you see peak T wave. What does this tell you? The RK is high. How do you manage apokalemia? You have to think. Whenever they give you change in the EKG, Change in EKG, don't even worry about the potassium anymore. Potassium becomes irrelevant. What is most important is protect the heart. Which of these protecting the heart? Dialysis is going to take a while. Versus ferrocimine is going to deal with the potassium. I said, don't worry about the potassium if there's an EKG change. What is your priority action? You have one second. If you don't do it, patient die. You got to be sharp. Abudro will lower the potassium. But this is your problem. I told you, don't worry about the potassium. Protect the heart. We give them abudro to push potassium inside the cell. Okay? We give them insulin and glucose push potassium inside the cell. We give them furosemine and they can pee it out. We do dialysis to remove the potassium. The only thing that protects your heart is calcium gluconate. 
And if there is the EKG, that's the first thing you do. Don't worry about the potassium. You got to stabilize the heart. So number three is your right answer. Which lab value the nurse should anticipate? Select or apply. A nurse is caring for a client admitted for what? Also for geoviruses due to what? Severe cirrhosis. So he's bleeding and he has severe cirrhosis. All you need to do is take cirrhosis and you said liver failure. What is that? Find what the liver does. The liver make protein. I expect albumin to go down because he has severe liver disease. The liver control your AST and ALT. If it's damaged, there's too much pressure then. That's what cirrhosis means. Things builds up, builds up. Your AST and ALT are all elevated. The liver regulates your bilirubin, which come from red cells. The red cells get breaking down, hemoglobin go into the kidney, the liver, and liver regulate your bilirubin and recycle it in the system. If it's diseased, it can control bilirubin. Bilirubin goes up. The liver receives blood from the kidney. When there is cirrhosis in the liver, so this is the liver. Okay, and the kidney, yeah, yeah, not the kidney, the spleen. It receives blood from here. And there's something we call portal vein. It receives blood from the spleen. It sends uh, blood from the spleen to the kidney, yeah, from the liver. If there's cirrhosis, this build up and the spleen become bigger. When the spleen get bigger, always, every time you have hepato, no, every time you have splenomegaly, Things about platelet. It can chew your platelet. So platelet is going to go low. The liver break down metabolites. Metabolites like BUN and urea. And that is ammonia. If the liver is diseased, your ammonia builds up and you develop encephalopathy. Therefore, Ammonium goes up. The liver make protein and coagulation factors. If it's affected, your PT and your INR goes up. High partial thromboplastin time. This is PTT. It does not affect it. It's a trap. Low platelet. Yes, you don't have to pick anything if you don't know, but if you're 100% sure, pick it. So the platelet is going to be low. Albumin is not going to be high. Bilirubin is not going to be low. AST will be high. Ammonium will be high. PTT is not affected. INR is high. So we have one, four, five, and seven. Those are your answer choice. So four out of seven are your answer choice. Okay. What is the next priority action? Same thing, priority. The same question we saw by changing. I wanted to give you the content here. A nurse is caring for a client on dialysis three times a week who presented to the nephrology clinic with weakness, fatigue, lethargy, temperature 98, is bradycardic, and their labs show potassium of 6.6. .6. Which one would you want to do? The key word is there's no EKG here. So if there's no EKG changes and you just have potassium that is high, your your job is to push the potassium inside the cell, push it inside the cell. Which one act faster? That's all. Which of this is going to act faster? Sending potassium inside the cell, which one? 
hemodialysis, albuterol, K acetate, or D50 followed by 10 milligram of uh, IV regular insulin. What do you guys think? Which of this will you pick? I got to get of the potassium quickly. Who can do this quickly? You don't have time for dialysis. Abudro may take some time. This, you got to take in, you got to drink it, and you got to pass through the system, and you got to poop it out. Bowel movement. No, we, we don't have time. This is your friend. You give them dextrose, then you push insulin in it. Or you can give them insulin, but you have to make sure your glucose is normal. Then you give them dextrose so that they, become, they don't become uh, hypoglycemic. So this number four is your right answer. Number 10, a nurse is caring for a client with chronic kidney disease, awaiting dialysis. So he's about to get dialysis. What lab do you see? Which lab value the nurse you anticipate, select or apply? I keep on killing you with the kidney because the kidney does a lot of things. It has, it makes hormones, ipotin alpha, that help with your hemoglobin. So most people who have kidney disease, they have anemia because they cannot make ipotin. This is fine. Their phosphorus is supposed to be high because calcium is low. This is too normal. I don't expect that. Potassium usually is going to be high. At least these people, they go like, if they're waiting for dialysis, as you expect it to be a little bit higher. Creatinine, diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. BUN, diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. Calcium is normal. I don't expect it. It's going to be low normal while they take their medication. So one, four, five are your right answers. Somebody will argue, well, if they take a medication, it will be normal. Yeah, because this is too normal. But I did not say they take any medication. So one, four, five are your answers. Select or apply. Which of the following the nurse should suspect on assessment? A nurse is reviewing lab value for a steroidic client from the emergency room. The abumin was two. What do you expect? Somebody with the liver problem. He has abumin of two. Two. That means the abumin is very, very low. Okay? Abumin is a protein that keep water in the system. Okay? If it's not in the system, it leaks into tissues. So tissues have more fluid in them. Your leg is going to have edema, okay? Your abdomen will have a fluid wave of percussion. That is what, ascites. Your lung will be full of fluid. And when you walk, because you have ascites, so this is what happened. This is the dem, and this is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is usually here. If you have ascites, the diaphragm moves up and then you push on the lung. So you have deep snare on a session. Your lung is full of fluid. When you shake their belly, there's percussion. Their skin is not going to be tainting. It's not going to be flat. It will be a lot of edema. So one, two, three, and five are your right answer. So that's what you expect somebody with abumin, low abumin. Okay, now I, can, I will let you guys do the rest. So you guys can practice now. And this is, which additional finding the nurse should 
anticipate. And this is reviewing lab values for the client six hours after thyroidectomy. Couple pedal spasm present during blood pressure management, bas weight. You see this, when they give it to you, they give you the answers. That's what I think personally. When they give it to you, this, they give you a bas weight, think about it like I've given you answers. So you should look at the answers. Use this to answer the question. That's what the examiner is saying. Six hours post thyroidectomy, and you have what? Carpal pedal spasm. When you're measuring their blood pressure, what do you expect? I don't like giving you away the answers. I use buzzwords in the question to let you think. In case you're taking the test, this is what the examiner. I'm trying to think like them. I'm not examining, but I know what is the most important. So I'm trying to set the question like they would do. So what do you think? Use the buzzwords to make a diagnosis, right? Thyroidectomy, keyword, couple of pedal spasm, six hours later when I'm measuring the blood pressure. What is the problem? If you know the problem, what else do you expect to see? So you guys try it. What else do you expect to see? You don't have to pick all the answers, but if you know it, pick it. That's the thing. I know you know it, so pick the right answer. What do you think? What is the problem with this patient? Bring it on. I have thyroidectomy. I have to do something to the patient. I've done something to the patient, that's why. And so, that's why they're having carpal pedal spasm. It's a buzzword, right? This patient, what is the patient problem? Hypocalcemia. That is what is giving you carpal pedal spasm. There's a, there's a name for it. I'm not going to tell you. You know it, so, right? Hypocalcemia. Then you tell yourself, what do I see when I examine a patient with hypocalcemia? I don't like memorizing symptoms because they can give you symptoms you don't know. Remember, when your calcium is low, you have excitability. So excitability, things start going up. You'll be in tetany, right? Yeah, reflexes will go up. Their calcium is low. This well, they will probably why they have symptoms like that. Your laryngeal muscle, this is why we take care of it. It can go into spasm too. It's a muscle. You can have airway problem. Your mouth, you start to have numbness and tigginess, like something is crawling. And when, what do you see? Do you see your QT? Low calcium, does it prolong your QT or it shorten it? What you guys think? You have to know this. Low hypocalcemia, does it prolong your QT or shorten your QT? So, E, prolong your QT. So, this is wrong. So, there is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five are your right answers. So, these are your answers. Signs and symptoms of hypokalemia indicates from trying to put it together. Uh, without no memorizing the same things, that's, that's the way you should approach them. You don't memorize it, but you know what is going on and you can figure it out. Okay. If you have questions, um, you can type it. I will take care of it later. I saw some BU and creatine crap, uh, questions. On. Another question. 
which of the following lab value is consistent with the finding? And this is caring for a client on what? Chronic aspirin and heparin. The next suspected thrombocytopenia due to the medication. Which of the following lab values is consistent with the finding? Thrombocytopenia, right? Thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia. What do you think? The word is thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia is related to what? Platelet, right? Platelet. So you're just changing the words and then rewriting it. This is like a free question. If you know it, you don't even have to sweat it. That's, they can give you questions. They, they always give questions like that. They use the word and rewrite it and you have to define it. You can say pancytopenia, thrombocytopenia, thrombocytopenia, it's talking about platelets. And so you just pick this and you move them. If they say pan cytopenia, okay, sometimes people get confused. This is pan, that means multiple. Break it down. Let me write it. Pan cytopenia. Right? Penia means low. Cyto is the cells, pan all cells. You see what I've done? All cells are low. That means your RBC is low, your platelet is low, and your WBC is low. When he said pan cytopenia, this is it. The thrombo, that what causes the thrombosis is platelet. So thrombocytopenia, something that causes thrombosis is low, and that is the platelet. If they say a plastic anemia, sometimes people get confused. It's related to pancytopenia. It's just telling you something related to pancytopenia. How do you get pancytopenia? It affects your bone marrow. So something went to your bone marrow and lead to all this. Your red cell goes down, platelet go down, white cell go down. When they use a plastic anemia, something go to the bone marrow and they lower only your RBC. So a plastic anemia, that means the thing is affecting your bone marrow. So it is just words, I just wanna show you if they see words in those questions like that, that's what it means. Okay, another question. Which of the following lab value is consistent with the finding? A nurse is caring for a client admitted for what? Alcohol intoxication. EKG shows ventricular fibrillation. Which of the following lab work is consistent with the finding? I do not give you too much, but I want to see how much you know. There's some numbers that look abnormal there. But this is classic question you have to know. Alcoholic patient came in with ventricular fibrillation. What is the problem? What is the problem? What do you think is the problem causing this problem? Whenever you hear of a magnesium, uh, uh, alcoholic patient, think of magnesium. The magnesium is low because of and more nutrition, their timing is low. These are the two problems they usually weaken. So this patient, alcoholic problem is due to magnesium. But you have to know low magnesium, there's two deadly rhythm you have to know for your birds two deadly rhythm, right? The two deadly rhythm you should worry about is what? Tosad, 
the pointage and VFF. The low magnesium, yeah, this thing usually it causes prolonged QT. It takes a while before you, you can have a, um, a fibrillation, but it does not cause too much fibrillation. Mostly you prolong your QT, you're going to heart block. Magnesium of one, it causes this problem. To side the pontes and VFib. So don't forget about it. Low magnesium, to side the pontes and VFib. Those are deadly rhythms you should be familiar with. So this patient, alcoholic patient, he has low magnesium. Number 15. And this is caring for a client with bipolar with the lithium level of what? This. What is the next best action? This you have to know what this should be the normal range. That's all. Should the nurse hold the lithium nurse dose or give it, notify the MD or give it, or give half of it? What do you think? Should the nurse give it? I don't know, you, you guys tell me. Give it or don't give it. Give it or don't give it. Give it or don't give it. What do you guys think? You know the normal level, so I don't have to. It's like 0 0.5 to 1.2, 1.3. So the nurse should administer the medication. She not worry. This is normal. Keep on going. We want to get a um, lithium level a little bit higher. Okay, so don't hold it. But three, um, administer it. This is a trappy question. I will see what you guys think. We took the following. When I said the question like that, it's a trappy. I just want to, it's a critical thinking question. Don't overthink it. Use your, your content you know, and then analyze the question and pick it. When you start overthinking the question, it becomes problem. So don't do that. Let's look at it. Which of the following the next you anticipate? And next is reviewing lab values for a client with what? Apolipidemia plays on what? 40 of atovostatin once a day for three months ago. So, and then you have this lab value. So break it down. I take statin for three months, 40 milligram. That's all. That's all. You see, I rewrote the question. I'm taking starting for 40 milligram, three months, for three months, okay? And this is what I have. My LDL was 150, it's now 130. HDL is 40, it's now 50, 55. Triglyceride is one, 200, it's now 120. Cholesterol is 290 and it's now 250. What do you want to do? Increase the dose to twice a day? Take the medication in the morning, continue the current dose, or increase the dose to 80 milligram a day. What do you think? Think about it. Don't overthink it though. Think, but don't overthink. Right? So what do you guys think? Think about it, but don't overthink. Sometimes they give you questions like that. They want to see if you understand medicine. It's taking the starting 30 mini, uh, 40 milligram for three months. They usually start like 10 milligram. They can go up to 20, then 40. The maximum is 80, but nobody stay on 80. Everybody is able to achieve and like 20 or 40 milligram, right? Three months is not enough. Sometimes we gauge you for six months, it's not enough. But what is the, look at the problem. There is a good direction from 150 to 130. We have gone down 20 points in, in three months. That's a lot of work. 
Your HDL is normal now. That's where we want you to get it to. It's high. We want it's protective. Your triglyceride is also normal, right? It's less than 150. The cholesterol is borderline. It has to be less than 200. But it's good. It's doing fine. Test taking skills. If you increase the dose twice a day, and you increase with 80 milligram a day, it's the same thing. A cannot be the same as four. A is saying the same thing as four. Why do you want to pick it? And then you don't take this medication in the morning. You take it at night because that's when you make cholesterol. Test taking skills. If you don't know, you got to pick number three because uh, one and two, four are saying the same thing and you don't take the medication in the morning. Therefore, this is no, I know you know this, but I just want to use strategy, like show you some test taking strategy. Like you don't know the answer. It look cumbersome, but a bunch of words. But when you look at the answer, what? One and four are saying the same thing. You should not waste your time on it. And you don't take the medication in the morning either. So, we should continue the medication. That's all. Four more questions, then we're done. This is another question to text you. Which of the following the name should be concerned about? Concern is a buzzword. And this is reviewing lab values for an alcoholic client on the MedSed ward. The lab value shows sodium 125, potassium 3.5, by carb 22, BUN 19, creatinine 1.1, magnesium is 1.2. The patient is on odansetron for nausea. What should he be worried about? Let me think if you guys can think critically about this question. I've broken down for you. Alcoholic, he came in, this is his lab, and he's on odansetron. Which of these should the nurse be concerned about? Which of this should the nurse be concerned about? You have to make a diagnosis, like I show you the first case, breaking down, alcoholic, all these things, I look at the lab, magnesium 1.2 is too low, which is what I think alcoholic people do. But then you put a dancitron, yeah, it causes QT prolongation. And magnesium 1.2 can also cause QT prolongation, it's low. We have two QT prolongation problem. Yeah, I don't like it. This is a trap. You think oh, pulmonary edema is more dangerous. It, it's not going, there's no evidence of this patient is fluid overloaded. So your right answer is number three. Okay. Tachycardia, no. Magnesium, don't do that. Constipation, he can do that. But I mean, it is, it, when the level is low, it does not cause constipation. But even that, Prioritization, you have to look at the things that you think is going to kill the patient. So QT prolongation. Three more. Select or apply. Which of the following the nurse should suspect as the cause of this lab finding? And then she's reviewing lab values for a client with CHF on what? Lansinopril, spinolactone, Bumitimide and a beta blocker. A routine BMP shows sodium of this, potassium of this, and creatinine of one. I have sodium 134, potassium six, creatinine of one. And I'm on lansinopril, spinolactone, bumitimide, and a beta blocker. What do you think? Who is the culprit? Is a select or apply? 
test taking skills. Look at the lab value carefully. Sodium is a little bit low. Potassium is a little bit high. Creatinine look normal. Which of these medications would behave like that? Four answers, select or apply. That means there's more than one answer there. So select or apply. So you either one, two, or three, or four answers are right. So what are your answers? What do you think? So, lansinopril, what does it do? What is the side effect of that? Lansinopril, you spare your potassium and get rid of your sodium. Bumitimide, decrease your potassium, decrease your sodium. Spinolactone, spare your potassium, get rid of your sodium. Right? Beta blocker, there's no too much relationship with the electrolyte issue. Um, even though it can block um, beta agonist effect, but it does not affect it that much. Usually electrolyte, um, glucose and those things, it causes mostly hypoglycemia. So which of this is the problem? Lensinopril and spinolactone. So one and three are your right answer. Okay. This, is, this can be a little bit hard. Some people don't pay attention to these numbers. I try to set a question here. What is the next best action? And next, receive a call back from the lab for a client on Coumadin with a prontrobe time of 26 seconds. Rewrite it. I have Coumadin or Warfarin, and my PT is 26 seconds. It's the same questions I gave you. What do you want to do? Do you want to hold the next dose of Coumadin or add some heparin to it, give the next dose of coumadin, or add gatroban to it. You have to know this numbers in case they give it to you. Okay, your PT, the normal level is 10 to 13 seconds. Okay, 10 to 13 seconds. When you're in Coumadin, you multiply the lower one by 1.5 and the upper one by two. Okay, so you multiply this, so this would be like 15 to 26. So this is therapeutic. Okay, 15 to 26 therapeutic. 26 is therapeutic. So they should give the next dose of Coumadin. There's no need to give them any more heparin because this is therapeutic. There's no need to add a gatroban to it. And there's no need to hold the next dose. But you have to know these numbers. 10 to 13 seconds is a normal PT to see the range, multiply the lower one by 1.5 and the upper one by two. And you get it, like I said, 15 to 26. This is therapeutic value. So three is your right answer. Okay. If you don't know that, those are the numbers um, to do the calculation. And the last one, for the last, okay?
which lab value need immediate intervention? What do you think? Which of this? If you don't know, this, there may be something that look normal to you, eliminate it. And whatever is left, you can figure out the answer. So which one need immediate intervention? What do you think? One for the road, the last one. I'm looking at the answers. What do you think? 0.7 on a, for a drug, a patient drug level you know, on digoxin and vancomycin 25 milligram, HDL 55 while on atovostatin and platelet of 152,000 on heparin drip. What do you think? You should be able to recognize some normal values and then you can eliminate it and whatever is left is your right answer. So these are normals you have to know. That's why I put it there. Digoxin is normal, right? 0.5 to like two. Platelet is normal. 150,000 to 40, 450,000. When you're on starting, 55 is good. We want the numbers to be higher. Therefore, I have eliminated this, this, and that. I don't know two, but I have to pick number two. So this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. Vancomycin is 15 to 20. That is the normal range. So when you're on vancomycin, that's where we want it to be. 25 is too high. And so that should be your right answer. Okay, so this is the 20 questions. Um, very quick, I went through very quickly. Um, this is just to show you, don't memorize those lab values because they are very important and we use it to make diagnosis. I saw questions about the GFR. I said GFR, okay, it has inverse relationship to creatinine. Therefore, anybody whose creatinine is high, when the creatinine is high, it's bad. That means your GFR will be low, it's bad. GFR is inversely proportional to creatinine. When your creatinine is low, good. Your GFR will be high, good. So this patient is good. And I said BUN, and creatinine are directly proportional to each other, right? So when th this is, that means directly. So BUN is directly proportional to creatinine. So if your BUN is high, your creatinine should be high. If your BUN is low, your creatinine is low. When they are low, they are good. So what is the relationship? I can write the, put the three together. This is math, I'm just using math. GFR is inversely proportional to your creatinine. And it's also inversely proportional to your BUN. Therefore, if this goes up, this goes down, this goes down, that means the level is low, this is good, that's what we want it to be. We want your GFR to be high, your creatinine to be low, and your BUN low. What does that mean? Creatinine normal, we want it to be one or less than, depending, sometimes 1.2 is okay. BUN, the higher normal is what? 20. So anything less than 20 is good. When your BUN is going up, that means your kidney cannot clear it. So high BUN is a problem. Okay, so this is the um, the relationship. I know it's a little bit, I'm trying to use math to explain it to you, but this is the way to do it.
okay? And that's the explanation I think somebody was asking. But thank you for watching and good luck in your exams. You'll be fine. Just be sharp, pay attention to the buzzwords, put it together, analyze the question and take in charge. And don't pick an answer because you feel comfortable. Pick an answer because you, you have eliminated it and you've used content to do that. If you don't subscribe, if you don't know who I am, I'm at that anchors. Um, I'm on YouTube. If you've not subscribed, you can subscribe. If you just scrolling through YouTube and you find us, yeah, just subscribe, check our YouTube, and then you you will never regret. All the best of luck and take care of yourself. Keep charging as always. Bye-bye.